Whatever happened to the city we know? Well, this is just fantastic. I'm at the most famous beach in Equestria. Alone. No friends, no other beach Patreons, and Roboponies to tell me I'm trespassing. I wonder if this is what it's like for normal high school ponies during or even before the war. Sneaking out to the secluded beach to meet friends in the middle of the night and hanging around for no other reason other than being at the beach and that's somehow cool. Then there's the added fact that I awoke somewhere else without my friends again. I'm getting really sick of that. Where are they anyway? I didn't see any remains of a sky carriage, just dead pre-war machines. Behind me was the Luna Ocean, sloshing waves up under the blackened sand of what I'm guessing is Fost Beach. In front of me sat a huge, silent, desolate city known as Los Alicorn. To my left was that long, peculiar dock with what looked like a carnival on it. And to my right, in the distance, there looked to be an abandoned skyport. The skyport seemed like the place where the Steel Rangers would be held up, so I probably shouldn't go there just yet, given my current condition. Although my pain was subsiding, it's still incredibly stupid to go there alone, even if I am pretty formidable. I sighed to myself in angst. What the hell am I supposed to do now? I looked up at the dock. I guess I should start there. Maybe there's something I can use or eat there. Why am I talking to myself? Right, because I'm alone, and that's what I do when I'm kind of freaking out. Gah. If I keep doing it, whoever finds me will think I'm crazy and probably will kill me. Why am I still doing it? That's it. I'm sealing my mouth with wonder glue if I find some. Talking to myself in a place like this isn't the smartest thing considering the dangers. I checked around the area where I'd woken up to see if there was anything that might have been dropped that could prove useful and saw nothing. So I started walking to the dock. Each step sounded like I was walking on broken glass as my hooves sank into the black sand. The scattered skeletons everywhere really brought up the creep factor too, like walking into some really screwed up nightmare night attraction. I wish I knew what happened on the day when these war machines came onto the shore while ponies were trying to enjoy their day in the sun. Then I stepped on a skeleton and looked at its shattered skull. That wasn't caused by me stepping on it. On second thought, Maybe it's better it's left in the past. As I walked, I didn't see any more robots telling me I was trespassing. Not live ones, anyway. Along the beach area were a few dead ones in front of various vacant homes and shops. As I got closer to them, I decided to take a closer look at the body. Behind its plastic coverings, I saw what looked like organs. Not real ones, but mechanical. The face reminded me of Lonely Hearts, if he weren't so beaten up from his travels. On the shoulder, engraved onto a plastic, red property of the Ministry. So, these are the synths everyone's so afraid of? Why, though? They don't look like they'd be able to replace anyone. Unless their coverings are some sort of shape-shifting material that can change what they look like. But that seems doubtful. At least they seem easy enough to kill. I continued towards the giant dock and looked around at the shops as I passed by them. This place must have been bustling back in the day, before the war, with some of the weird stuff they had for sale these places. One shop had goofy masks in it, another had the typical I Love Los Olicorn shirts, and one even had a strange looking vase with a convenient little watering stem towards the bottom. Fortunately, with that last one, all the plants in the shop had died and become part of the land once more, so I couldn't see why they'd kept such a thing in colorful vases. On the way by yet another shop, I snagged some sunglasses for Stardust. I figured he'd like how the blue lenses of the aviators went with his mane. I had finally gotten to the beginning of the dock and looked up at the bannered sign above it which read, Welcome to Del Pietro Pier. Great. I feel stupid for calling it a dock. <sighs> what else is new? As I walked up the creaky stairs of the pier, I got a little paranoid that my hooves would break through, or possibly my whole body. 
falling through a floor would reinforce Stardust quips about me being heavy, and if he found out about it, I'd never live it down. At the top of the steps, there was a parking lot, with some carriages. Time had taken its toll on them. The old, dry, creaked wood was peeling apart and had some already collapsing bits. Next to the parking lot, there were more shops that held some memorabilia of the pier and boarded-up restaurants. Walking through the parking lot, I also noticed quite a bit of burnt trash scattered around among the dropped remains of tourist belongings. There was a sign next to the welcoming banner, overhead the entrance of the carnival, ahead with a picture of Pinkie Pie. On it, it read, I may be watching you forever, but at least I'm watching you have a fun, fun, fun time. At the bottom of the line, in fine print, it added, This message brought to you by the Equestrian Ministry of Morale and the City of Los Alicorn Chamber of Commerce. This was the first time I'd actually seen ministry propaganda, but this particular sign was in considerably good condition. For once, this, the, the feeling of being watched over didn't seem quite as awful as it had before when I'd been told by Pinkie Pie that she was watching me forever. Crossing the threshold onto the park, I had my magic ready to pull out Dreamwalker. Through the dead silence, I could only hear the waves crashing upon the support beams of the boardwalk, and a faint static coming from a nearby stand around the corner past the Ferris wheel. I pulled out Dreamwalker as, and had it at the ready as I walked under the rusty tracks of the roller coaster overhead. The cars stopped as if suddenly seized. Remains of the dead were held inside a carriage as they hung over the side. The same fate befalling the Ferris wheel as well, with some of the individual cabins falling off or broken. In front of the Ferris wheel was a busted-up information stand. One of the cabins had fallen upon. Maps were scattered everywhere, many of which were burned except for a few. I picked one up and opened it, examining the vastness of the city. It's been said that Las Olacorn was one of the largest cities in Equestria. Now I was seeing why. This place was huge. From where I was on the beach all the way to the rest of the city, thousands of square kilometers were covered with buildings and neighborhoods. If I was going to find my friends, it was going to be a long and treacherous task in itself. Not only would I have to worry about the synths sent out on patrol of the city by the Ministry, but I'd also most likely have to deal with Steel Rangers doing the same and or fighting said synths, not to mention the fact that the Ministry might have more than just those sorry excuses for androids that I had walked past. There could also be some stragglers out there too, like raiders and wildlife waiting to attack from the shadows. Sure, the city was forcefully evacuated quite a while ago, but it isn't safe to say the Steel Rangers got everyone out. If I could be out in the open like this, and not running into any of them, then there's no telling what or who else could be out there waiting for their moment to strike. I noticed highlighted attractions on the map that caught my eye. The first being the closest to me was the university and the conservatorium. The Playpony Mansion, which sounded like a stop I might have to make out of pure curiosity. An art museum, the Far Eastern Theater, the Griffin Observatory, the Applewood Sign, and a few others not really worth mentioning besides maybe the dam and reservoir. There was also a river going through the city, the Las Alicorn River. From the looks of it, it's not much of a river. It's more of a canal now. The rest of the city was pretty basic. Closer to the Applewood Sign, there were some neighborhoods in the hills, which I could only guess were where celebrities and whatnot lived because of the nearby country clubs. More south was a downtown Las Alicorn with a ton of businesses and municipal buildings such as police stations, fire departments, hospitals, and city hall. To the east were more neighborhoods, and more south from downtown was a place marked as South Central Las Alicorn. From there on the city consisted more of neighborhoods than it did of industrial district. Then, west of the industrial district was the Los Alicorn Skyport, and just south of it, the port of Los Alicorn. If I don't want to run into any steel rangers, I should avoid larger areas, such as the Skyport and the port of Los Alicorn. 
I doubt the others would be in either of those places anyway. The only question now is where to go next from here. To the northeast or to the southeast? I guess I could head straight east into downtown towards the Equestrian Bank building to get more of a bird eye view on the city. However, it might be a hassle to get to the top considering the elevators are all most likely out of order. For now, I should check out the rest of the pier and make sure none of the others are hiding out here. I began walking again and noticed the sound of the static getting closer as I approached the corner. I took cover against the wall and shimmied along it with Dreamwalker, at the ready in my magical grip. I peered around the corner and saw that one of the outlet shacks had lights on. Continuing around the corner, still against the wall, I came closer to an outlet. Taking a deep breath, I pushed away from the wall and pointed my gun at the source of the static. To my surprise, I didn't get much of a reaction, as I was expecting. Hello! Welcome to Down and Out Burger! How may I prepare your Hey Burger today? A protect -a pony robot said from behind the counter. Uh, I don't know, I said awkwardly. That's quite all right. Please take a few minutes to move aside and make your selection while other Patreons are helped. I suggest the Mythical Beast style hay fries with a double hay burger, as it is our most popular combination. And do not forget the addition of a nice cold sparka cola, the robot said, and then turned as if it was awaiting new customers while waiting for me to choose what I wanted. To be honest, the Mythical Beast style hay fries sounded weird, but very interesting at the same time, and it's not like I'd be eating any other food for the time being. Hey, robot, I'll just take the Mythical Beast style hay fries for now, with a large sparkle cola, I said. Coming right up, the robot responded. It turned around and scooped some moldy hay fries into a tray. From how much time had passed, there shouldn't be anything here unless this restaurant was functional before the Steel Rangers ousted the city inhabitants. The robot picked up the tray and put it on the counter in front of me and opened its arms to reveal a nozzle, then proceeded to squirt a thick black liquid I could only assume was the mythical beast sauce all over the pile of fries. I gagged a bit at the sight and said, Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a wonderful rest of your night, and thank you for choosing Down and Out Burger today, the robot replied. Then I remembered something. What about the large sparkle cola? Unfortunately, we are currently out of stock of that particular product, as well as the rest of our soft drinks. Down and Out Burger sincerely apologizes for this inconvenience, and hopes you will not hold this against us in the future. Thank you again, and have a wonderful day, the robot responded. Great. Not only are these fries absolutely disgusting and inedible, I don't even get a sparkle cola at the very least. This day sucks ass. I just want to find my friends and go home. Not so all corn can go fuck itself. I've only seen 1% of the city and already know it's a lost cause from the beginning. On the other hoof, I could just be hungry. I picked up the tray of moldy fries and sludge and tossed it into an overflowing waste bin as I went around the next corner. There was a faint glow coming from a nearby vending machine, so I approached it. Maybe I'll get that soda after all. I stepped in front of the machine and tried to open one of the doors that held a refrigerated bottle of cola, but it was locked. I sighed to myself. <sighs> Don't tell me I actually gotta put money in this stupid thing. I dug around in the pockets of my duster and found some pre-war bits, then put them into the machine. I pressed the corresponding buttons for my selection and tried to open the door once more, but it was still locked. Damn it! I yelled, then proceeded to hit the glass with Dreamwalker. The glass shattered, and I grabbed the bottle in my magic, pulling out the beverage from the machine. Take that, you thieving piece of shit! This is my cola now, bitch! Then I realized how much noise I'd just made and quickly covered my mouth with both hooves. I looked around and didn't see like any pony had heard me. I guess even in a city only populated by the synths and steel rangers, not everywhere was completely covered by each group enough to hear every single sound or to see every single thing. I continued walking down the rest of the pier to the end to see if there was any pony there. So far I hadn't seen any pony, 
about that synth and the robot down at Down and Out Burger. I didn't even think about checking my EFS. I'm such a moron sometimes. Not even a random stranger or enemy down here at the end of the stupid pier. Then I heard something coming from the end that sounded like a radio. I stopped and looked at the radio broadcast on my pit buck and saw four broadcasts. Steel Rangers radio broadcast. Classical radio. Los Alicorn rock radio. Outsiders radio. The first one I turned into was the Steel Rangers radio broadcast. This is your elder. Are there any sightings of the invading force yet? I need to know if it was a courier or some other idiotic NLR scum trying to take back their city. Wolfbane voice said to the speaker, so I didn't attract any attention. I inserted my earpiece and kept an eye on my EFS while I listened. Then more voices came through. No sign of them in Sector 12, sir. Sector H is clear also. So are Sectors 2, 3, and 4. Sectors 5, 7, and 9 are also clear, Elder Wolfsbane. Elder Sector 6 is still searching to no avail, and Sectors 10 and 11 are pretty much clear, but we're still searching. For a moment, there was an eerie silence in the channel. Then I almost had to rip out my earpiece when Wolfsbane finally responded, How in the hell haven't you found them yet? Twelve sectors and nothing? At this rate, the Ministry could have found them first. Sir, we're searching as best we can. Six sectors haven't finished their search yet, so they could be there. It is our largest sector. They could be hiding anywhere. One of the voices said through the radio. I heard the sound as if Wolfsbane had pounded his hoof upon something in the background. I don't care if it's the largest district. Search harder, or I will do it myself, and you won't like it. Any invaders in this city must be exterminated at all costs. Yes, sir, the voices said in unison through the radio. Then the broadcast went silent. I switched to the classical radio station that was... All crappy elevator music with no lyrics, just music. There was a strange crackle in the background as if the signal wasn't that strong or something. I switched to the Lost Holocorn rock radio expecting to hear at least something, but there was also only silence. I switched to the last one, Outsider Radio, and finally heard something normal. It was the end of a song. I couldn't put my hoof on the artist, though. I began to walk back towards the road that leads to the pier as I listened. Then a mare's voice said into my earbud, That was the end of the world by Last Face, and this is your host, DJ33 and Third LP, coming to you live from the outskirts of Las Alicorn. It's been quite a while, uh, quite a few months, since the complete occupation of the city by the Steel Rangers, and no pony's been able to enter the city limits since. Although, it seems, some pony has sent those metalhead morons into a wild goose chase all over the city. As you all know, a sky carriage flew over a few hours ago and was immediately intercepted by the Steel Ranger Border Patrol. Chatter on the wavelength said that after cruising over Frost Beach, it suddenly disappeared without a trace. And those steel-clad douche nozzles have been searching every so-called sector of the city ever since. Word from an inside source says that they're looking for the courier of New Pegasus. But last I heard, she's dead. So it's probably just a few lucky bastards evading the rangers as best they can. Or unluckily, depending upon how you look at it. So personally, I'd say unlucky, considering what the steel rangers will do once they finally do catch them. She took a breath and then continued. So if anyone who's brave enough to go into that dump of a city happens to see ponies who aren't the Steel Rangers, then I'd say give them a helping hoof. This might be a wasteland filled with death at every turn, but we are still all ponies. And we should help each other when we can. Unless you're a stupid-ass buckethead like the Steel Rangers. If so, then you should pull out your gun and put a bullet into your brain. In other news, we've been seeing strange activity from a group of fiends or raiders, not sure what the difference is, building up some sort of compound in the southeast side of the city just past the Steel Ranger border. So if you happen to be living near there, stay away. Raiders or fiends, it don't matter. They'll turn you into jelly like most, likely spread you on their morning toast. 
Also, for those who live in the northeast side of the city near Dragon Bridge, Miss Mapletree is having a buy one get one sale on her goods all day today and tomorrow. The sweet old mayor wanted me to let you all know to come on in and spend some caps. But if you stop by today, you'll have a chance to meet me while I'm in town visiting the lovely mayor and her family. Last, but not least, I have one more bit of news for you all, so pay attention. I stopped when I got to the road, looking around to make sure no one was coming, then sat and listened to what this mayor had to say. For those of you who live in Dashite Cove, I know you're listening. Keep an eye out for Enclave activity. I've picked up reports from New Mexter Pegasus that all the way out here that something's going on in Stratus. From what he sent me, it looks like a coup d'etat has happened with the rulers in the city. The last reports show just a few hours ago, the former leader, a Pegasus named Lightshade, was last seen fleeing the city, being chased by their air support. A few more Pegasi have been said to have either fled or died during the attack. From what we know, a Pegasus who took over the city and its sister city of Nimbus is putting a bounty on all Dashites. So if you have families, hide them. If you don't have one, then make sure to hide yourselves. Or at least keep an eye on the skies. I have a few friends there, and I'd hate to see them die because of some power-hungry Pegasus. If you need help, contact the Red from Stratus. You all know you can trust him and his family to help you. And that's all I have to say for now. Stay safe, my friends. Stay smart, and remember, never let the Ministry, the Rangers, or the Enclave win. This is DJ 33 and a half LP. Thank you for listening. I'll leave you again with another song I just got in from Applewood Undead. With those last words, she was gone, leaving me with a pounding heart. My mind was ready to break at the news she had just sent. My father, he's been taken out of office by another. He was last seen fleeing the Enclave. Is he alive? I flipped through my broadcaster and opened the secret channels like Mom showed me and looked for one he used to contact me before. It wasn't showing up. This can't be right. Was he just too far away or did something happen? I can't have my father die. Not after I finally found him again. Not when I was so close to getting myself free from Aquila and being able to start a normal life. Why does bullshit like this always have to go down at one time? First, I'm stuck here alone. I have to deal with the Steel Rangers and Synths. I don't know where my friends are, and now this crap with my father. When does it all end? When will all the fighting stop in the world? Will we ever know peace again, like back in the time of Princess Celestia's rule? The war ended, but the conflict grew. Every pony in the land fought tooth and hoof, not just for their country anymore, but for survival. Creating a new war that's been raging for 200 years. It seems that war itself doesn't change, but enemies do. Before the land was baked with fire and magical radiation, it was ponies against zebras. Now it's every pony against every pony until the last one is standing. It sounded like the vocalist from the song felt the same way I had when I heard the lyric. Whatever happened to the city we knew. War has overtaken this former paradise. Pony against machine in this case. Unless you consider it still pony against pony. Some pony has to build a synths, right? The Ministry seemed like the big bad evil thing that everyone's terrified of. But all I've seen are some clunky robots with cheap plastic guns. Something's gotta give in this conflict between the Ministry and the Steel Rangers. You'd think the Steel Rangers would have easily wiped out the Ministry synths if they were all like the one I saw on the beach. They must have something else up their sleeves other than cheap Sweetie Bot ripoffs. From what I could see at the beginning of the pier, there were some steel rangers heading down a staircase into the beach. I suppose those jackasses are looking for me, I said quietly to myself. I kept an eye on my EFS and made sure all of them went down there before I continued walking up the pier. As the last one reached the bottom of the staircase, I saw a sudden flash, like a miniature bolt of lightning. Corsar! One of them yelled as he started to shout in the general direction of the flash. I didn't hear the lasers from his rifle connect with anything. 
I only saw bolts of energy fly in a direction from all their weapons. Some of their weapons stopped firing as sounds of different energy weapons filled the air, along with pulsations that sounded like spark grenades going off. Instead of interfering with the fight, I decided to run to the beginning of the pier as fast as my hooves could carry me, and disappeared into the giant metropolis.